So now let's have a quick look at the Perl syntax. First of all, uh, how do you make a comment in a Perl program? That works the same way as in the shell. You start with a number sign and then the comment goes to the end of the line. And that makes uh, Perl compatible with the Unix uh, hashbang uh, convention that you can start a Perl script with number sign exclamation mark slash bin slash Perl. And then the kernel knows that if the Perl script is an uh, a plain text file with the executable bit set, it can just call the uh, interpreter after this hashbang in order to pass the entire file to it to be executed. That's something that's uh, many other uh, Unix scripting languages like Python have in common. Um, <clears throat> Compound statements look somewhat similar to in what you have in the C programming language. So for example, if, and then a Boolean expression uh, surrounded by a parenthesis followed by a block. Unlike like in C, um, the block uh, is surrounded by curly braces, but unlike in C, uh, these curly braces here are mandatory. You can't have a single unbraced uh, statement here. Um, unlike C, there is an else if uh, keyword and that just allows you to have a series of uh, tests that an if statement makes without actually nesting the syntax because if you have a lot of statements along the lines of if a equals one block else if a equals two block else, if a equals three block and so on, then the syntax would nest uh, and this would get you into trouble after a couple of nestings, whereas this combined else and if statement uh, in the auto indentation that the uh, editors give you, this will not nest any further. So you stay at the top level, which is quite convenient. Um, while loops, uh, again, will first test the expression and then if the expression is too true for as long as the expression is true, will execute the block. So the block will be, exit zero, will be executed zero or more times. Uh, for works uh, the same as in C. Uh, at the start of the loop, the, the first expression is evaluated. Then before each iteration of the block, the second expression is evaluated and if it returns a true value then the block is being executed and after the block has been executed the last expression is evaluated. The last expression is usually used to iterate uh, to increment a loop variable whereas the first expression is used to initialize a loop variable and the middle expression is used to test a loop variable. You can also use the for loop or you can alternatively use the for each uh, keyword, but they're really synonyms here, in order to iterate over a list of, over all the elements in a list. You just provide here a variable name and then for all elements of the list, one after another, this variable name will take on these elements of the list and the block will be executed as often as there are list elements here. The while loop can have a uh, continue block and that operates similar to this third expression in the while loop. It's executed just before this expression here is uh, evaluated uh, after the block here has already been executed. So this can also be used to increment, for example, a variable and prepare the next uh, evaluation of this expression. Unlike C, there's an alternative syntax for uh, many of these uh, compound statements where you have a single statement, not an entire block, and the single statement uh, precedes the compound statement, the if statement here, for example. And if you write it this way around, then you can save yourself the parentheses and the braces. So you can write n equals zero if... Uh, n first incremented and then compared to 9 is greater than 9. 
Um, <clears throat> because here the keyword if terminates that statement and the semicolon terminates that boolean expressions none of these braces and parentheses are needed you can there's also a until uh, statement that can be used like a normal uh, compound statement it works like while just it inverts the meaning of the expression but you can also use it as a uh, so-called accepting loop that uh, as opposed to this being a rejecting loop uh, which executes the block at least once so you can use in curly braces a block and put a do statement in front and until afterwards and then this block will be executed at least once and then uh, the statement will be tested and then the block will be repeated until the statement here is true for all of these different loops, um, inside the loop there are three ways of aborting the execution of a loop. You can use the last command to immediately exit a loop. You can use the next command to start the next iteration of the loop. If there's a continue block, then that will be executed first, like the third expression in, in a for loop. And then uh, the test expression is evaluated after that. And there's also a redo command that just jumps back to the start of the loop block. So without doing anything with the continue block or reevaluating the loop condition. If you have multiple nested loops, then you can also assign a name to the loop by just putting a label name followed by a colon sign in front of the loop statement. And these names you then can refer to after the last next or redo statement in order to make clear which of multiple nested loops you refer to so in this example here we're testing uh, with this regular expression here whether um, the line that has been read here from standard input comes from uh, is a comment line starts with a number sign and if so we discard the comment by just jumping to parsing the next line there is no need to declare global variables. If you just refer to $x, that variable will jump into existence. Um, there is, however, the possibility to switch Perl into strict mode by using the command use strict semicolon or by uh, use and then uh, the version number of Perl that you assume is required at least to execute uh, that Perl function. This may enable some more recent features without worrying about backwards compatibility. And then you have to declare uh, global variables as well. The requirement for declaring global variables is useful for longer programs because there is the risk that you mistype a variable and then a mistype variable, if it just jumps into existence, can be a bug that's dif difficult to find. Whereas if you have a list of all the global variables that exist uh, declared, then a typo just becomes, in a variable name, just becomes a syntax error. How do uh, functions, subroutines work? Um, <clears throat> you can declare a subroutine by just writing sub, the name of the subroutine, and then a block of statements, like for example here I've defined a subroutine called max that reads two parameters, x and y, and then if x is greater than y it returns x, otherwise it returns y. And we can call a subroutine like any of the built-in Perl subroutines by just the name and then in, uh, followed by a list of parameters and that list of parameters inside the subroutine is at the time of the subroutine call being assigned to an array called at underscore. And you can refer to these parameters just in the at underscore array by writing dollar underscore zero for the first parameter and so on. But it's conventional and more readable if you do an array assignment from at underscore to a list of parameter names with nicer names. So here I have a variable list uh, $x, $y. And 
in this assignment here, I hand over these parameters to $x, $y. The my statement is used to declare a local variable inside a, a subroutine. You can also use the my statement to declare a global variable if you want to be in the uh, strict mode that I just mentioned. And the return value of a subroutine is just the uh, last val the value of the last expression uh, that has been executed. So if $y here uh, looks like it's not doing anything, but actually the evaluation of the expression $y is, has the same effect at, in its last line uh, as if I had written return $y, whereas return x here returns immediately. <clears throat> the parameters are actually handed over uh, called by reference. So if you refer to the parameters directly in the uh, at underscore array, then you will find these have not been copied. These are actually aliases for the actual parameters. So you can assign into these values and then you will get an error if the value that has been passed on was a, uh, a constant value. But if this here was a very if the parameter was a variable, then by assigning to these call by reference parameters, you can actually write values back into these parameters. And the parameter of the return statement or the last statement will be evaluated in either scalar context or list context, depending on in which context uh, the call here was evaluated. So here we're assigning to a scalar value, therefore max is being evaluated in a scalar context. Operators in Perl look very similar to the ones you know from the C or Java programming language. So you have the usual addition, multiplication, um, the uh, bit shift operators, um, modular integer division, the Boolean operators, Boolean operators with shortcut, the question mark colon notation, and also the assignments with increment where you can write uh, x equals x plus 1. You can also write shorter as x plus equals 1. In addition to these uh, C operators, there are a couple of others. For example, the expon numerical exponentiation is the double star. That's a notation copied from Fortran. Uh, then there are the numerical comparison operators. But in addition to the numerical comparison operators, there are also string comparison operators. So if you want to compare uh, two numbers with each other, for example, uh, 10 is greater than uh, 2. But if you do a string comparison, then 2 would actually be larger than 10 because a string comparison doesn't look at the length. It just stops at the first pair of characters that it compares uh, that are different. Um, there's also operators for string concatenation. So the dot concatenates two strings and the uh, lowercase x is a string repeat operator. So $a dot $a dot $a is the same here by string comparison with $a multiplied by 3. The equal tilde operator applies a regular expression operation to the variable on the left hand side. So you can have just between slashes a regular expression and then the result of that will be a boolean value that indicates whether the regular expression has matched or not. But you can also use the same S operator that we've already discussed in set, which does a substitution. So this expression here looks at the line and all occurrences of the letters SED in line will be replaced by Perl. Not just the first occurrence, but all occurrences because we have here the global option. The backticks execute a shell command included between these backticks. So this works very similar and is a syntax borrowed from 
uh, the shell. There's lots of other Perl operators uh, for which I have to refer you for a time reason for the Perl op man page. I just briefly want to mention my all time favorite operator, namely the dot dot operator. That actually has two meanings, completely different meanings in scalar context and list context. In list context, it expands into a number range. So if you write one dot dot five, it just gives you back an array the same as one comma two comma three comma four comma five. In scalar context, the dot dot operator is a flip flop. And the purpose of that flip flop is to operate in the same way as the address range that you can specify in a set style line range. So if you're inside a loop and you want to, for example, test, uh, you want the loop to execute only on certain lines between the lines uh, where a start condition was met and a stop condition was met, then you write if start condition dot dot stop condition and the operator has this built-in flip-flop. It has state, which is initially false. And as soon as the Boolean value before the dot dot is true, the, val the flip-flop associated with that instance of the operator will switch to true. And this will continue until the second uh, operator, the, the second operand after dot dot is true. And then the flip-flop will go back to off. So this is one of these little facilities that make sure that there is really nothing in set that you can't do almost just as easily in Perl. And finally, I mentioned already references in the context of lists and hash tables, but you can create uh, for arbitrary uh, variables, uh, subroutines or values a reference which work a bit similar to pointer addresses in C by putting a backslash in front of the uh, in front of the expression. So if you have a variable at a which is an array, then backslash at array is a reference to that array. So it works in a sense similar to the ampersand operator in C. If you want to dereference such a reference, references, remember, you can assign to scalar variable, then you just prefix it with the sigil letter that expresses what type of reference you are expecting. So if you have a uh, reference dollar $A, that is uh, a reference to another scalar, then you just put another dollar sign in front and that dereferences that scalar reference. Um, Often it's customary to uh, surround whatever follows this dereferencing operator with curly braces. This makes things a little bit more explicitly readable, in particular if what follows that dollar sign is a longer expression, for example, a hash table or a nested hash table lookup then it can become a little bit confusing what exactly you dereference. So having a clear operator precedence with these uh, curly braces here can be quite helpful. Um, <clears throat> if, for example, uh, $A is a reference to a is a reference to a, a hash table, then you might think uh, you need a percent sign to dereference that hash table, but because you then reference the uh, a scalar value in that hash value afterwards, the overall return value is actually a scalar and therefore you are actually uh, required to use a dollar sign here. This is admittedly a somewhat confusing uh, syntax, but it is actually not commonly used in practice because there is some syn syntactic sugar, some shortcut in the form of the array operator, in, in form of this right arrow operator, which uh, dereferences either a hash table reference if it's followed by a curly brace or it dereferences an 
array and reference and accesses it if it's uh, followed by uh, square brackets. So this is the commonly used notation. If $a is a reference to hash table, then we dereference $a and in the hash table that we now have, we look up the key John. Here, B is an array and we $b is an array reference and we dereference that array reference. We now have an array and then we look up inside the array, the fifth element. And as I mentioned, you can create anonymous arrays, arrays that haven't a variable name associated with them uh, with by putting square brackets around a list. And if you put a curly braces around a list of key value pairs, then you will get a reference to an anonymous hash table. So this is a somewhat quirky syntax, but once you get used to it, it actually works quite well. Nothing to be afraid of.